What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Turf Therapy. I'm Rob and today's episode is going to cover three main topics for the most part. We're going to be talking about the T-Jet nozzles that I got to upgrade my Ryobi. We're going to talk about compatibility mixing and how you can use the jar test method to make sure that you're okay to mix different things up when you're doing applications in your lawn. And then finally, we're gonna do my second prodiamine application. So as you know, I did my first prodiamine application a little over a month now, but more importantly, when I did it, my soil temperatures were a consistent 50 degrees and approaching 55 degrees. So now where I'm at, my soil temps are right about 60 degrees. And with the weather that's coming here in the near two weeks, is definitely going to hit 65 degrees by the end of this 15 day forecast. Right now would be the perfect time to get down your second application of Prodiamine if you did a split application like myself. So let's go ahead and hop into these T-Jet nozzle comparisons, yeah? All right, the list name for these objects, they're pretty long. I'll throw it right here, yeah? You see that, right? It's long. Now, so for intents and purposes of this video, we will refer to them as two different nozzles being a fan tip nozzle and the air induction nozzle. So where you see the XR is, that's going to be our fan tip nozzle. This should be down in the bottom, I believe. And then the air induction one is the one that has the AI XR, I believe. And I will refer to that as the air induction nozzle moving forward. Cool. Whew. Got that out the way. All right, first one we're gonna start with is the one that I use the most, which is the fan tip from Ryobi. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw the fan tip from the T-Jet on the screen so you can see it in real time. I did these test sprays and look at the difference. One thing that I noticed with the Ryobi, right? Although it's a fairly fine mist, and for the majority, it's pretty consistent, it cannot stand toe to toe with this T-Jet tip that I have. Look at that beautiful mist pattern. And on top of that, it's like I got a whole extra two feet of a swath. It's like I already have a brand new unit already. I'm already impressed. I'm already happy. Um, we can close up shop right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you're looking for a certain particular tip, you're looking for consistent size in droplets and spray pattern. And the Ryobi tip just was not meeting the bill here for me. And I noticed it over time. I have had success with this tip, don't get me wrong, but I want it better. I want it more precision and more accuracy. And that's what these tips are providing for me for a very, very small cost. I mean, come on, five bucks a tip? That's cheap, bro. So next up is the adjustable Ryobi tip and then the air induction tip from T-Jet that I got from Sprayer Depot. Now, the reason why I'm lining these up together is because the purpose that I used to use that adjustable Ryobi tip for, the induction is going to replace that. So I'm gonna throw up on the screen side by side again, and you'll see that the spray pattern for the Ryobi tip is not ideal. Like it's blotchy. As soon as I squeezed it, I mean, it works. The fluid's gonna come out and your application is going to be fairly good. You know what I mean? You're gonna get good results out of this, but it's not consistent, it's not precise, especially when we're talking about doing an application like prodiamine. You don't want prodiamine anywhere other than where you, in where you intended to put it because it can have adverse reactions to other things in your, let's say, flower bed. You don't want it in your flower bed. You definitely don't want it in your garden. So, with that being said, I have invested in a proper tip, a better tip. And that better tip, I've come to the conclusion, is clearly the winner, the air induction tip. Those droplets are very large, much larger than the Ryobi fan tip and much larger than the T-Jet fan tip, right? But what's most important here where I'm looking at, right, is the quality and the consistency of that spray pattern. You can't beat it. So there you go. Right there on the screen, I've shown you side-by-side -side comparisons, why you should go ahead and upgrade your tips if you are still using factory tips straight out the box. Now I imagine this is gonna apply for most um, backpack sprayers unless you went big with like the flow zone or something because those, those are pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. This is a very affordable and upgradable piece that you can add to your unit that won't break the bank as uh, my buddy Troy from Budget Lawn says. So the next thing I did was calibrate my new tip. So the reason why you wanna go ahead and recalibrate your tip is because you might find, like I found, that the flow rate is drastically different from the original spray tip that you already had. So for me, in my example, I started my timer at the same time that I squeezed the lever, and then I just watched the tank drain out one gallon of 
the fluid that I had in the tank to see what my new time is. Now for a reference point, the I originally had my Ryobi calibrated to about three minutes and 30 seconds per gallon. However, when I got done with the T-Jet spray tip, I was rocking at two minutes per gallon, people. Yeah, wicked fast. Since that was such a big margin of time difference, instead of risking it and coming up short and not being able to spray 1,000 square feet accurately um, within that time frame, I just figured I would slow everything down. And you can do the same thing too. At first, I was able to do 4,000 square feet, putting one gallon to each thousand square foot. Now, all I'm gonna do is do 2,000 square feet on four gallons, giving me more time to get an accurate, well-placed application onto the lawn. Does that make sense? Yeah. So after we got that done, we got onto the Prodiamine application. So let's see this baby in action. So let's go ahead and knock this out. Remember, you want to kind to paint yourself into a box or out of a box, so to speak. And we'll be good to go. Let's do it. Yeah, so another thing, I'm glad he mentioned that. So what he just referenced was this gives you better, what is it called, drift, drift control. So because the droplets are a little bigger, this is actually designed to keep you from having to worry about your droplets going all over the place. That is literally what this is designed for. Thanks, wonderful cameraman, people, I'm trying to tell you. That's really good. So, boom, that drift management. And I think I was here? Yeah. All right, so how much I got left in the tank? Is that the gallon side or the liter? Three. Three? So there's a full three. So what we're gonna do is uh, go to the front, do that, and I'm gonna come back and then do this again. So um, you're not gonna get it right every time. You're not gonna get it perfect every time, but it's important for you to keep mental notes like I just did so you know how to adjust if you need to adjust. All right, guys, welcome back. We're all done with our second round, second application of Prodiamine. Now we're about to do some spot treatment on my lawn, uh, closer to a blanket app, not really a blanket app, but spot treatment over there as well on his lawn for some dandelion. I have some, uh, gosh, what is that? I just said it earlier. Grass? Yeah, I do have Dallas grass, that's up here. But what's creeping in over here is um, common chickweed. Yeah, we shouldn't see any crabgrass. We in front of that. That's chickweed, so that's common chickweed over there that's spreading. And I saw like a little teat of a dead nettle. But anyway, so what I have is my little one-two combo that I fell on last year that pretty much takes care of any weed I've come across since I've been here in the transition zone, which are these two products right here, T-Zone SE and Dismiss NXT. You heard me break these down when I did my common winter weeds video. I'll throw that in the eye in the top right corner. So you can go check that out if you haven't seen that video. But one common question I've been seeing quite often is when you don't know if herbicides are compatible. So I'm gonna show you the quick and the easiest way I know to do it right now. Got that on my car, it'll be all right. But so we just gonna take a taste, just a, just a taste, right? And we're gonna put that in this water, right? That's a taste, just a taste, right? I'm gonna clean this off my car here in a minute. So that is the T-Zone SE. Now we see that this T-Zone SE is um, in here. We'll shake that up. It's happy, right? You see that? It just looks like cloudy water, right? Cool. <laughs> he shook his head. I got it. I like that. So that just looks like cloudy water. Nothing 
interesting is going on. Doesn't smell like anything is crazy going on. So then you take your other product and you just need a taste, guys. And I say a taste because you gotta remember this, we're putting down, I'm putting down 0.23 ounces of this stuff for a whole thousand square feet. So we just need another taste. And if we overdo it, that's okay, because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it when we're done with it. And I, and I put a taste of the Dismiss NXT in there. All right. And then we mix that together. And you can keep doing this with other products. I mean, I wouldn't recommend mixing more than like two or three products, but if I had a soil conditioner I wanted to throw in here, like some humic acid, I would throw that in here and mix it. And look at that. Does it look any different from just now? Looks the same, right? So that is a quick, easy jar compatibility test. And you're like, Rob, so what do I do? I just mix this in the jar. I know it's compatible. Should I just like go pour this on the spot that I'm angry at? No, I, I wouldn't do that. We got what we mixed up right here and I'm just going to put it back in the tank. It's, it's that simple, it's just a taste. And that's another reason why I say just a taste, right? Um, just a taste, pour it in there with the mixture I got already ready to go. And boom, that's perfect. All right guys, thank goodness for my cameraman, right? Cause I completely forgot to tell you the most important part about the air induction tip, which is that drift management guys leads back to having more control. You got your better droplets, right? You can get that down to the ground. And this can be applied to many different products. This is not just narrowed in to Prodiamine or anything. If you have humic acid and you apply humic acid, get this air induction tip. If you apply anything that needs to get to the soil surface layer, the air induction tip is gonna be the one for you. If you're applying something that's going to be foliar, like let's say liquid iron, then you're going to want to get the fan tip from T-Jet because the mist in the particles are much, much smaller. That's going to be your winner, I promise you. You will not regret this. So again, I'll drop a link to Sprayer Depot and a link to those two nozzles in the description below. If you are a DIY lawn care enthusiast, I'm going to send you over to thelawnform.com. Listen to me. If you are a DIY lawn care enthusiast and you are not following John Ware and you are not registered to the lawnforum.com, you are doing yourself a disservice. Go over there right now. Those guys, they are willing guys, reputable guys, pros in there that are willing to help you figure out how to take care of your lawn. Um, and that's where I pulled all this information from today. I went on there on the hunt for the perfect fix for my issue that wasn't really an issue, it was just an improvement I wanted to make this year um, so I could be a better steward to the environment and to my lawn over and into my pockets, <laughs> be a better steward for the environment, for my lawn and for my pockets. By getting these tips, you're gonna save money in the long run as well. Not having to run multiple applications. Of course, the jar test method, really simple, really easy to do. And then we finish it up with the prediamine application. And you know, if you have weather conditions similar to mine, then look at your soil temperatures because this might be the perfect weekend or week for you to go ahead and get your second round of prediamine down and possibly the first. If you're a little late, it's okay, no big deal. All crabgrass seeds don't germinate at the same time. Well, that pretty much wraps this episode up, guys. Thanks again for checking into Turf Therapy where we are healing lawns and souls. And I'll see you next time for your weekly dose of therapy with Rob. Thank you.